afternoon. Uh, we have some announcement. Uh, welcome to Amen Methodist English Worship. We pray that you will be uh, blessed to today's worship. Uh, and thank you for your participation in that special song and service last week at the two o'clock sir at two o'clock service. Then Bible study and how to know the Bible we follow after the worship. That's all for the last part. Hallelujah. Are you ready to praise the Lord? So let us pray as we uh, continue to praise Him. Let us bow down. Father God, we come before you today and there's one thing that we want to say to you, Lord, this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your faithfulness to us, Lord. We just want to worship you and we just want to give you the glory, honor that's to your name, O God. We humbly bow down before you, Lord. And acknowledge, O oh God, that you are holy. You are a holy God. And that we are sinners, O oh Lord. And that we ask you to forgive us. As you promise us in your word, that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And thank you, Lord, and we just want to thank you. We just want to receive your forgiveness, for we know and we believe that you are a forgiving God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And we also want to thank you for your protection and guidance and provision for us throughout the whole week, last week. Yes. For you, because of your grace, oh God, we can be able to come this today to give you thanks and to worship you. Thank you, Lord, for your um, love for us and your presence with us this afternoon. We just want to worship you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts, O oh God. For you are our God. You are the uh, God who created us, and we just want to give you praise. Be with us, Lord, as we surrender our lives to you. And we ask you to continue open up our hearts, O oh God. Give us a heart that hides your word, O oh God. So that sin will not come in, O oh God. Give us a heart that's undivided, Lord. A heart that beats compassion, Lord, to please you, to serve you, and to worship you. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one that are here today. Be with us, and we dedicate this service into your hands. We commit this service into your hands, and this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us continue to worship the Lord. By singing this song, I surrender.
that does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Wherever he is going in him, he has to so walk as Jesus is Let's pray. Uh, dear Father, thank you for calling us here uh, and, and calling us to worship together. Today is Thanksgiving Day, Father, especially Lord, today we want to uh, praise you and thank you and remember especially how grateful uh, and how merciful uh, and how faithful you were uh, throughout this year, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Lord. Uh, but today, Lord, we especially thank you for the salvation uh, we have. We thank you for Jesus Christ, Lord. I pray that you'll speak to us through our uh, passage, through your word today. Uh, open our hearts, our ears, and our minds to accept your word, to, to, uh, to live according to your Lord. Lord. Speak to us, Lord, perfectly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, in Korea, I've been uh, walking around in Seoul, and I live in Bunda. So uh, I, I walk around, especially near uh, subway station, you see a lot of shops. And in Seoul and even in Bunda, I see something that I, I've never seen in America. And that's a small little tent. And in the tent is a small table and about a woman in her, in her about 50s or 60s. Uh, and it's a, do you know what tent, what kind of tent that is? It's a psychic, a fortune teller. It's a fortune teller, right? There's a lot of, I see a lot of those in Korea. Uh, so if you pay a small fee, they promise you that they, they can tell you your future, yes. important events about marriage, about family, about career, mm -hmm. about business choices. Uh, they can, uh, you know, give you the wise uh, uh, wisdom, and they can, uh, you know, tell you what's going to happen in the future. Uh, I don't know how popular or how active they are, but by the number of these uh, psychics, it must be very popular, and they must, you know, be, uh, you know, accurate in one sense or or another. So we see Koreans in general, they want assurance of what's going to happen in their life. Important events like marriage. They want to know, like, who am I going to marry? When am I going to be wearing? Who should I marry? Uh, what should I do? Uh, what kind of career? Which university should I go? Uh, Koreans want assurance. Assurance of what's going to happen in the future. Because we don't want to be, uh, you know, doubting uh, or nervous about what's going to, be in the, uh, what's going to happen in the future. In our passage today, uh, God and through John tells us that we can have assurance in something. Uh, it's, it's something more important than marriage, more important than career, more important than business, more important than this, uh, family. Uh, we can have assurance in something uh, very important. Uh, that's what our passage tells us today. So can we look in our first verse, uh, verse 3. Let's look at it. We know that we have come to know Him if we obey His commands. Uh, just in this passage, there is a word that repeats over and over, and that word is no, no. Okay? Remember, uh, first John, during this time, there was a cult called the Gnostics. Uh, Gnostics. Uh, it's also pronounced as gnosis in Greek, which means knowledge, no, no. So he's trying to, uh, uh, you know, refute against this cult, no. So what does this uh, cult say? Uh, if you have a, a, a lot of knowledge, you can attain salvation, right? So Hinduism, Buddhism, and a lot of other new religions nowadays, if you have uh, enlightenment, if you have a lot of knowledge, you can have salvation. So uh, this passage is uh, especially against uh, this cult, right? There are two types of know in this passage. The first one is uh, continuous. We can know every day, right? Uh, the second type of know is it's the perfect tense, right? Uh, I think I told you two weeks ago. This is what? Something that happened in the past, but it uh, has influence in the fu uh, future, in the present. Okay? So make sure we understand this to know, uh, to understand this passage. One is, we can know every day, continuously. And then the second know is, uh, something in the past, but is uh, uh, influences us today. Okay? For example, I married uh, Sophia uh, this year, earlier this year. But it has influence uh, till this day, right? For example. Okay, so let's look at verse 3. We know, this is a continuous, we can continually know, right? We can continually know that we have come to know Him, right? We have the first know, which is we can continually know. And the second one is in the perfect tense, which is something that happened in the past. 
Okay, but it is it still uh, has influence today. So what does this mean? We can continually know that we have come to uh, uh, have faith in Him, faith in God. Okay, so we we can know that we actually believe God in the past. Uh, do you guys do you guys understand? We can continuously know if we have believed God in the past if we obey His commands. So at some point in your life, maybe two years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, you believed in God, right? We can continuously know we actually believed in God if we obey His commands. And this obey is what? Not something in the past, but uh, if we continuously obey God's commandment, we can know that we actually believe in God. So how do you know that you actually believe in God? Uh, right? It's if we continuously obey His commands. Alright? So do you see, uh, in English it's very hard to see. There's two types of know, but if we look at the Greek, that's why it's very uh, important to know the, uh, the original language. We can, uh, let's, uh, let me just re-emphasize verse 3. We can continuously know that we have come to uh, have faith in Him in the past if we continuously obey His commands. Right? So if we say, I obey Him in the past, but I, do, I don't obey Him in the present, that means what? You never knew Him, you never believed in Him, uh, so you cannot know if you have uh, salvation. Uh, this past Wednesday, every Wednesday uh, in our school, we have club day, and we play soccer. Uh, even in this cold weather, we play. So I have to take uh, my kids, and we play soccer for one and a half hour. So this past Wednesday, I got sick. I got a cold. So I went to the hospital, uh, and then the doctor asked me, so what is the symptom? When did you start getting sick? And then she checked my temperature. I didn't have a temperature. Uh, and then she checked my throat. I didn't have a swollen throat. And then she says, no, this is not a cold. Uh, this is an allergy. Uh, okay? So the symptoms showed that it was not a cold, but it was an allergy. All right? So a doctor can diagnose uh, a illness by its symptom. We can diagnose our salvation through the symptom. And what is that symptom? Obedience. If we continually obey God, we know that we have believed Him in the past and that we can continuously know that we are saved. So uh, you cannot say, I, I, I obey God in the past, but this is what if we continuously obey Him. Of course, we're in Christian life, we're not going to be perfect, but uh, there is this uh, progression of obedience. Okay? Sometimes uh, you're going uh, uh, to have a low in your Christian life, but the trajectory is what? Progressively, uh, you're going to be holier and obey God more and more. So how can you be sure of your salvation? Uh, think back from the first day you believed in God. Uh, do you see your life growing in obedience and growing in holiness? Then, verse 3 tells us what? We can know. We can know. We can wake up every morning uh, knowing that we have assurance of salvation. We can go to bed every night knowing that we have uh, salvation. We have assurance of salvation. So look back in your Christian life. What does your life tell you? What does your life tell you? Verse 4, let's read that together. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Right, the man who says, I know him, the third note that comes, this is the perfect tense, right? So, uh, something in the past. So, I did uh, uh, translate it. The man who says, I, uh, I have believed in Jesus, okay? But does not continuously do what God commands is a liar. The truth is not in him. Do you see a lot of Christians who say, I believe in God, but their life uh, does not show him or his fruit, right? What are they? They're a liar. And the truth is not in them. So what command is he talking about? The Ten Commandments, of course. And the Ten Commandments can be summarized into two what? Love God and love people, right? So, how about you? Do you say you're a Christian, but do you uh, continually obey, love God, uh, love people? Uh, does your life show you that you have actually uh, been saved? Uh, faith and action is two sides of one coin. Uh, 
you cannot separate faith and action. Uh, for example, let's say uh, Mr. Lee's son, this person, uh, right, uh, walks in the door in the middle of this uh, sermon, and then he says, fire, fire, fire. There's a fire in the big auditorium, right? If we don't believe in him, we'll scold him and say, hey, why are you bothering worship? Get out of here, right? Okay? But if we really believe that uh, boy, what would we do? We'll stop the worship, we'll get off our seat, and we'll run out of this building, right? Because we don't want to uh, burn to death, right? So you see uh, how we, uh, if we have faith in him, uh, our action will follow. If we don't have faith in that son, our action will not follow, right? You see, faith and action is two sides of one uh, point. So what does James chapter 2, uh, verse 14 and 17, uh, James chapter 2, verse 14 to 17. So what does James say? Let me read that aloud to you. Okay, James chapter 2, verse 14 to 17. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by faith action, is dead. So you see your brother and sister, and you tell them you love them, you care for them, but they are in need, but you don't do anything. Is that love? Uh, it's not. It's not love. You see, faith uh, is shown evident uh, by uh, action. Action. All right. Um, how many books are there in the uh, New Testament? There are twenty-seven books. Okay. Uh, in the first and second century, uh, they were sure about these twenty-two books. Twenty-two books were uh, uh, God's word. Uh, the church was sure, but they were unsure about five books. And then uh, in AD 170, the Muratarian uh, canon, they were sure about 24 books out of, out of the 27, but they were still unsure about Hebrews and the book of James and the third John. And the reason why were, the church was contemplating whether to include the book of Hebrews or James into the Bible was, what did Hebrews and James say? Uh, you are saved not only by faith, but by action. But what did Paul, who wrote 13 letters in the New Testament, what did he keep saying? Salvation is by faith. Salvation is by faith. So the church leaders were looking at the, the book of Hebrews and James says, hey, it's not matching with Paul. Should we include it or not? Should we include it or not? So they were debating for hundreds of years. And finally, in the uh, 4th century, century, late 4th century, the church finally decided to include Hebrew and James into uh, our, our New Testament uh, Bible. So what is faith? Faith is, yes, uh, professing and believing in Jesus Christ, but it is evident uh, through our life, uh, through our heart, uh, action. Uh, so, uh, verse 4, the man who says, I know him, I know God, I believe in him, but does not show the fruit, does not show the, the action, is a liar. The truth is not in him. So are we one of this uh, man in verse 4? Are we a liar? Is the truth not in us? Do we tell others that we believe in God? But our actions uh, do not show otherwise. So I want us to uh, think about it. Okay. Verse 5. But if anyone continually obeys his word, uh, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know what we know. We can completely know we are in God. Okay. Right. So God's love um, uh, is, is translated as love of God. Is it God's love or our love uh, for God? Uh, but I want to look at it as our love for God because in chapter 5, we see that coming. So, uh, but if anyone continually obeys his word, our love for God is truly made complete. So how can we show our love for God? Uh, is it praising Him? Yes. Is it telling God to others? Yes. But the climax, uh, the, the complete, the mature way of loving God is uh, to obey His Word. Is to continually to obey His Word. And that's how we can show uh, our love uh, for God. And 
then it says here at the end of verse 5, this is how we know, we can continue to know, we are saved, we are in God. Verse 6, let's read it then. Whoever claims to live in Him must walk as Jesus is saved. Right? How can we be sure that we are saved? We walk as Jesus walked. How did Jesus walk? Jesus obeyed uh, the Word of God and He loved people. He loved uh, humanity, right? So one of my favorite verses that depicts uh, Jesus' love for God and love for people is Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 5 and 8. Right? Do we that? I'll read that for you. Okay. Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 5 through 8. If we walk like Jesus, we can be assured that we also have salvation. So let's see. Let me read that for you. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Right. So if we walk like Jesus, if we love, um, of course we cannot uh, uh, you know, reach to the extent of Jesus, but if our life is heading towards that direction, uh, we see symptoms, uh, we have assurance that we have an eternal life. Um, I teach uh, senior uh, 12th graders, uh, which is a last year of high school in my school. Uh, right now is a very nervous stage and also Chanya, uh, she's also a senior. Uh, they're in the midst of taking their uh, college entrance exams. Uh, they're applying for universities. So uh, they're going through this process and uh, they're unsure what's going to happen next year. Next year when school finishes in May and June, they don't know where, uh, which university they're going to go or if they can even uh, you know, be admitted to a university. So they're living in a time of uncertainness. Uh, so when I, whenever I look at my senior students, they look kind of nervous, uh, unsure. And then there's this one student who got admitted early and he's so happy and then there's, he's so peaceful compared to uh, all the uh, other uh, students. Uh, so whenever I look at Chen Tushi's, she's uh, I talk to her and she's kind of nervous because she's not sure what's going to happen next year, what's going to happen to her. For their young life, university is one of the most important things. And when they're unsure, it's, it's, it's very hard. Uh, not for only senior students, but I think humanity, Koreans, with the number of psychics and humans in general, we want to be uh, sure. We want to be sure about what's going to happen in the future, our family, our work, um, why not? But most importantly, uh, what's more important than temporal things are eternal things. Right? What, what's going to happen to us uh, after uh, this world ends? But we don't have to live in uh, uncertainty. Uh, we can have assurance. Right? So uh, through listening to today's word, there are two reactions. One is, yes, I see that trajectory in my life. I see the obedience, uh, continued obedience in my life. Then what, what can you have? You can have assurance. You can praise God. Oh God, thank you. You don't have to second guess. You don't have to wonder every morning or every night you go to sleep. You don't have to wonder. You know what? That you are saved. That you are in Him. And no matter what happens in this world, what? There is peace in you, right? Because the, the symptoms show that you are saved. But on the other hand, there might be some of you who say, Oh, I see my life. I don't see this symptom. I don't see this trajectory. And we have to again, uh, you know, think about our faith, think about Him. Right? So that's what our passage is telling us today. Uh, gnosis, gnosis, gnostics. So uh, this uh, passage hit me. It's not about how much you know. Uh, to know Him is to obey Him. It's how much. Uh, just because I know more than you uh, doesn't mean God. Uh, I am saved. Right? Even the devil knows. God more than anyone else, right? It doesn't mean he is saved, but to know him is uh, to obey him. So he's uh, telling the Gnostics, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, right? So you know God more, 
when you obey God more than me, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm confident that you know God uh, more than me. Yeah? Okay, so uh, think about that. Which side are you on? Um, do you have assurance? Then you can like, praise God, praise God, praise God. Uh, on the other hand, some of you might be saying, no, I don't, I don't see this. And we need to, again, okay? uh, think about it. Okay, so, uh, let's take this time, just uh, a, a minute or so, and just uh, reflect on this word. Uh, maybe some of you have received assurance and say, God, thank you for the salvation. Thank you for the eternity. I don't have to second guess. I know where I'm heading after this world. Thank you, God. I praise you. But there might be some of you who say, God, I don't see that symptom in my life. I don't see that sign of obedience in my life. Lord, uh, what is wrong with my faith? Lord, uh, maybe right now could be a time to look again at your faith. So let's just take a moment. God, we'll be free. Okay, yeah. yeah. Enjoy your tea. 